All right, and welcome everybody here in Twitch chats and also on YouTube if you're watching this video later on over there for our second deck in our Game of Thrones themed decks today. We have Game of Thrones final season, season eight is debuting tonight. And so we're playing some decks that, you know, kind of have some themes with Game of Thrones. We went with the Abzan Treasures uh, last league for the Iron Bank. And now we have our House Lannister deck with Orzov Aristocrats. Um, then we, we're coming up here after this. We got Grixis Dragons and Mono Black Zombies for the White Walkers there. So uh, <clears throat> basically what we got going on here, we're calling this Orzov Aristocrats because basically aristocrat decks are decks where you have you play a bunch of smaller creatures that you want to sacrifice for value. That's that's basically what aristocrats decks are. Are whenever you're sacrificing your own creatures um, for value. They're named after they get the name from Return to Ravnica. Uh, had it decks with based around cartel aristocrat was the main um, aristocrat from from Return to Ravnica. So. It's kind of Cartel Aristocrats, a similar card to Pitiless Pontiff here, basically. And so we got our Pitiless Pontiff that can sacrifice your own creature to be able to gain Death Touch and indest Indestructibility. We also have Priests of the Forgotten Gods that can sacrifice our own creatures to do a whole lot of things, as you can see there. And so then we're playing a bunch of creatures with Afterlife, with Tithe Taker, Orzhov Enforcer, and Seraph of the Scales. Hunted Witness basically has Afterlife, uh, even though it came out before that keyword. Um, and we don't really mind our gutter bones dying and so on. So we're going to be an aggressively slanted deck trying to curve out into like Midnight Reaper. Like we get just attack with these things and even have our Midnight Reapers where if they block, we get to draw more cards. We'll have our Johnnies. They'll pump up our creatures, make it harder for them to block or be able to get back our Pontiff, our Priest or our Tithe Taker. So this deck is pretty good. And let's go ahead and try it out here with Orzov Aristocrats. Yeah, well, there's just not there's not mono white zombies. We can't we can't there's not white zombies in MTGs. So we have to go with the black zombies, even though they're white walkers. I don't know. It's close. It's close. Same same concept. Ish. <laughs> oh, man, just don't have the white mana. We just can't keep it. All right, this will work. <laughs> Gonna go ahead and put this on the bottom. Okay, what are you doing over here? Just like... I want to come sit on my lap. Here you go, sit right here. Shocking in a breeding pool. So we're shocking in for opt. Yeah, they're shocking in for opt. Because they're like, we don't need this two life against the aggro deck. No. I just played turn one gutter bones. They're probably not going to be pressuring my life total. No, we can definitely pay this two life here. Easy peasy. I hope they have Growth Spiral in their hand that they won't be able to play now to the Scythe Taker. Alright, so the plan is to play a Johnny because the Johnny can tick up and make both of these three powers, make it a two-turn clock. And Sinister Sabotage... Not able to play that one because of Tithe Taker, so they'd only really have like Negate available here. No, you're you're right. I think Tithe Taker is the best white card in in Ravnica Allegiance. Like, what would what's what what else is like close to Tithe Taker? 
Um, the only other one I can think of off the top of my head is Unbreakable Formation. Is there is there something I'm missing? Okay. <laughs> guys attacking the camera. So, want more mortifies, another Johnny, and all these duresses. Don't think I want the cast down. And Orzov Enforcer is just too slow. Unfortunately, Priest of Forgotten Gods is pretty slow here too. But so is Hunted Witness. Like, both of these are slow. Maybe I'll play two of these and two Hunted Witness. Because if, if, if we do get them down to, like, you know, two something and they're trying to fog us we can activate priest and get around to fog well I'm on the draw I could see keeping this Ugh. sorry mortify All right, come on, deck. Help us out here. Dang. Five card hand was going to be pretty tough, too. Well, good news is they used the, they had their perfect hand of you know turn three wilderness reclamation against my hand that was unplayable. So we lined up their best hand against my worst hand. So we got that one out of the way. Now let's let's get another one where we have a solid one that that beats our opponent. Perfect. Now they mulligan. So see, perfect timing of like wh when to line up your really bad hand. Line it up against their perfect hand, and then you can win the other two games. So. I did a great job of lining those up. That was definitely strategy. And yep, that's exactly how magic works. <laughs> and now we have basically our game one hand. Gutter Bones, Tithe Taker, a Johnny. Still playing this ag again over the Midnight Reaper because I don't want them to have a Sinister Sabotage this next turn. Do not fear so now we just need to draw Duresses, Mortifies. What I see. Those are the cards we need to find. Duress, Mortify. Dress or mortify? Okay, dress. Deliver us to victory. They're at three cards in the graveyard. They're not flipping this as Kanta here. They gotta find something this turn, and they are keeping that card. Basically just a, a redraw there. Just 
another redraw. All right, that's game. Got the match, 1-0. All right, and we get a pack. We should get a you should get a booster pack every single time you beat Wilderness Reclamation. They're like, "Hey, you beat Simic Nexus? Here's here's a pack. Congratulations." Let's see what we get. Uh, 40 gems. Oh, 40 gems. Okay, so we got all the mythics now in the set also. So I guess I thought there was still a mythic that we didn't have four of, but I guess not. I guess we got all the mythics. So, all right. So, we got all the rares and mythics. All the cards from Ravnica. Yeah, so we got the complete set. 1-0. and All right, pretty good hand. We'll keep this. <clears throat> hey, what's up, Orasonic? All right, so Yud, I like the the num the test number one. I liked the bottom part where the two. Like the left and right part on the bottom. I like that better on the first one. Okay. So, Priest of Forgotten Gods is like really important to have down in this matchup. Yeah. I'm just getting this down. It's just so important to have him play. And I don't I don't really I don't like the I think the white design is better in the first one also. So basically I think the first one's better. Really need to draw this fourth land here, where, where we can double spell with these, with these kind of things. Oh wait, we'll be able to double spell anyway, though, with activating priest. Don't kill my priest. Don't do it. All right, good. Time to start going with the priest here. And I think I'm just casting the mortify over the. I'm going to cast mortify over cast down. Oh, never mind. So I could do tithe taker plus cast down. 
Or I could do Seraph. They're sacking Jade Light Ranger. That probably means they have Find. Or I guess they have these Follies too, though. Okay, activate Priest, target you. Yeah, that is surprising they didn't use Elf to make Krasis a 4-4 four, four and draw 2, right? That is. So how do, how do we best play around find finality is basically what we're kind of doing here. Do I just pass and have Mortify available, or do I play History? I'm definitely not playing Priest. Do you think I should Mortify the Elf? Yeah, that's what I'm thinking, is I, like, they finality put the counters on this crisis and I kill the crisis. Kind of thing. Right, yeah, that's what I was thinking, yeah. Killing the elf doesn't stop them, so... Well, only one card in hand. They could have just been letting their things die because of Memorial to Folly, not find finality. Hey, Sothian. So, you had one less cleaner. I don't like the design behind the arena part at the top. extend. I don't think they have finality. I don't think if they have finality they would have just cast down the my priest last turn. I don't think they have that. So I think they're just like going with Memorial to Folly and stuff like that. I'm extending here. This is bad for us. 
What deck do I have the most fun playing right now? Um... I'm not sure. There's a lot of decks that I really like. We stand to look how far you've come. So I'm I'm pumping up these things so that I can attack through Hostage Taker. Like they'd have to double block for that. So, so I'm pumping up the like those tokens would just be two twos and I wouldn't be able to attack through Hostage Taker. That was a really good draw for us. Yeah, Esper, the last few times we played Esper Legends with Ruinous, like Esper Legends, Nia Legends, those are fun. Uh, I like Simic Midrange, the deck we played earlier in the week. Uh, Grixis Discard, of course. Uh, we played an Orzhov Angels yesterday that's kind of like this deck, but Angels centric, and that was quite a bit of fun. So I think I'd rather kill my own creature with the priest here than kill their hostage taker when they, you know, later on could be getting the hostage taker back kind of thing. Either way, like, one of them blocks, like, these knights. It's not really that big a deal killing one, two, or two, three. But also, but just getting priest off the battlefield I think is nice. Well, that's not going to save them. So they're at five, and we will have lethal here. Cool, you played the Abzan Bugler yesterday? I will lend you my strength. Hey Magic Harry, good afternoon. No, I did not see the land that was spoiled today that's like engineered explosives. No, I did not. Oh, what's this planar celebration card? Oh no, that means Bolus. We know that. Is Bolus gonna lose now? Because this Planar Celebration card? Hey, what's up, Mitchin? Finally played my first FM at a local game store, got destroyed, but had a blast. Hey, that sounds awesome, Mitchin. Way to go. That's. Playing at FM is. Um, it's certainly a you know, really enjoyable experience and a and great place to meet people and everything and all right so we're playing against Soltai. this is going to be a tough matchup for us i think yeah this one's gonna be kind of tough i think priest of forgotten gods is a big part of how we can win this I want my extra Midnight Reaper and extra Johnny. I want to cut the Hunted Witnesses. And I want a Contempt. And... I want this one... I want this Duress to take Fine Finality. Oh, they're so they took down a bola statue. Okay. Okay. Good. Story's not spoiled yet. We need to draw lands. Yeah, I haven't looked at the land yet. Alright, blast zone, land. ETBs with a charge counter on it. 
and it has tap, add a colorless, or XX tap, put X charge counters on it. So to put one charge counter, you have to pay two mana. There we go. Pay three tap, sack, and destroy all non land permanents with CMC equal to the number of charge counters on it. Yeah, that's a really strong card for a land. Yeah, especially in a format like Modern. Pretty good with Knight of the Reliquary. You can just surprise your opponent. Just go get a blast. Go get a blast zone. Put it into play. Destroy all things that cost one immediately. You got the mana for it. So post combat, they're playing a Wild Growth Walker. Seraph uses my mana the best. Yeah, so I'm going to play Seraph. Pitiless Pontiff. If they didn't have Contempt, I would be... be pretty intrigued of playing the Pitiless Pontiff this turn. Alright, well this was a really good hand for the opponent. So they cast Finality next turn. Wild Growth Walker still attacks for a bunch. You should be proud to have. You can still fight. So these things can have Death Touch. But I need these things to kind of survive a find finality and a contempt. All right, could really use a land drop. I guess both these things are six I power now. Find your path. Yeah, I can't block both of them. Should probably be playing more cast downs for this matchup here. Hmm. Finality is so rough. No, I don't want Lyra at all. Oh, 
Let's play Cast Down over Mortify. That's just an upgrade. I guess no duress. Yeah, Valera just costs so much mana and uh, it's very easy to Vivian away. All right, not an ideal hand, nothing on turn two right now. Let's put that plane to the bottom, see if we can draw a two drop to go before Midnight Reaper. That'll be ideal. So this could have been the duress. Oh, I need that planes back now. Need that planes back. Well, their hand's been incredible again. <laughs> yeah, they've had the the Wild Growth Walker on two, Jade Led on three, all three games. So how am I beating this Vraska Relic Seeker? Okay. Figured it out. They should be taking up. I am very glad they took I'm down. They really should that? be taking up there. Taking down makes their Vraska just too vulnerable. I just shocked this Godless Shrine in. It's very obvious that I have a removal spell. And now I get to kill their Vraska. Understand you are in need of support. I could see putting the counters on both the flyers. More than you assume. I'm not sure exactly where I want to put this. You know, like putting a counter on a tight taker or the other flyer. Not exactly sure there. I could really see the. I could see going either way. And I don't. I don't mind Johnny taking one. Perhaps there is taking one for the team. Solution. Ow. Was it something I said about a Johnny can take one for the team? Or you're whipping me with your tail? Hope there are other cards a, a dud in hand. No, 
out. Get out here. Can't take any hostage around here. Hoping that's a dud. It's fine finality, seriously? Ugh. This one is not a dud. Oh, I should attack with. I should just. No, because I want. I do want to tick up before I attack, I guess. Be strong. Do I attack with the Tithe Taker? Yeah. We had something good to minus. Like, if our opponent would have attacked with the Branch Walker last turn, we would have blocked and we would have minus with this a Johnny when it's at the two in and, and killed it and play a new one kind of thing. But glad we have the backup now. Good. Come on, deck. You've been giving us some lands for a little bit. There we go. It's not a land. We'll take it. So I think they're going to contempt the. Lend you my strength. Contempt the Tithe Taker and then attack both creatures out of Johnny. We have the backup of Johnny, though. I think I want to just, you know, try to get these flyers to kill my opponent before we die. See if we can race them. I was not strong enough. All right, well that works. Lyra would have been so good here, huh? <laughs> the harpooner. Ow. I will double block the WoW Growth Walker if they attack with both. You do not have to fight alone. Just rewatched season seven. Strength is born of struggle. Man, yeah, we only got only got like four hours left. All right, so I want so that's a five four. We can make the other one a 5-4. Deliver us to victory. All right, so definitely a Jade Light's blocking over here. If I attack with these, let's say Wild Growth Walker blocks Tithe Taker. This jumps in the other one. We deal six damage with the other Gutter Bones there. I don't think that's worth it. We'd base, but yeah, I don't. I don't think we need to attack with the other ones too. Let's 
It's basically trading the Tithe Taker for two damage is all we're doing there by attacking with these. We're having the Tithe Taker on the battlefield where it can die and come back with afterlife, I think, is important. Be strong. All right, draw brick. Game over. GGs. GGs. Okay, Orzhov Aristocrats is now two and zero. Oh. House Lannister would be proud for sure. Yeah, Papa, there's there's the link to Harry's right there. So that's right, you can get the starter set that's usually $13 for only $3. Go through my referral link to Harry's, get yourself a new razor, shave cream, all that kind of stuff sent to you for just $3. Uh, we need three more people here to sign up before we're doing a 12-hour stream. And if, if we get there, we're going to have the 12-hour stream on on Saturday when we do our sub battle stream. Uh, also, please don't have your, if you sign up for that Harry's set to get sent to you, please don't have your ad block on for that site or turn it off for that site because then the notification will pop up here on the channel. Um, but yeah, it's usually 13 bucks for the, for a starter set. Sign up for a subscription. You can cancel the subscription at any times. And then, uh, hey, DOS Bomb. And then also use the coupon code Todd Stevens MTG as well. And doing both of those gets you free shipping for US, Canada, UK, get you the starter set sent to your, your place for only $3. Great way to support the stream. Get yourself a, a good razor, try it out. Price wise, can't beat it. A little surprised they traded there. They could have find. Do they want to get it back with with find? I guess. I'm kind of surprised they traded that. They just gave me a lifelink token now. Yeah, playing Golgari again. Das bomb with the fifth month resub. Thank you so much. <laughs> All right, you two expert shot. Uh. That card's good. Good thing is Seraph does match up well against um, Vivian, because even if they even if they play if they play Vivian and minus to kill Seraph. You'd have the two tokens left, and Vivian has two loyalty left, so it's a good matchup there. Um, but playing the second Seraph here. I don't want to see finality. Well, that one's annoying.
doing? Get down. I always survive. Get down. You'll see. Hostage taker that gets to take the pitiless pontiff. Well, the the Vivian had six loyalty, so I have to attack. Like I have four, four, and one, so I can't attack four and one at Vivian because Vivian still has one loyalty left. So I have to attack four and four to be able to kill Vivian. Well, they don't have blue mana though. So that's why they don't need Hostage Shaker. No blue mana. We kill them before they find finality. Please don't have find finality, please. Bean aggro here, trying to kill them first. Hey, FMC to gifting a sub. The wild wasn't meant to be contained. Thank you so much, Santa FMC to. No one knows the wilds like I do. And uh, softball wolf getting that, getting that sub. Enjoy the emote, softball wolf. Now they have mana for Hydrocrasis, and they have the six mana for Finality. So, I think I can actually just kill Vivian. Yeah, I think I kill Vivian. Because if they do have a finality... Alright, so those are attacking Vivian. This is attacking up here. So they have a finality. Not bad. For a mouse. Um... The Vivian would be able to like kill the Seraph if I don't if I just attack all at them. If they just play Krasis for four, gain two life, I'll still have lethal in the air. So like if they just play Krasis, I have lethal anyway. Hey, you stop. Get down. Ugh. Sure seems like finality here. I think my opponent's playing finality. Yeah, they have to have another finality. But I think it was good to kill the Vivian. 
I could have. I guess I could have attacked four at Vivian and then eight at them. Uh, I'm one off. Yeah, they got to gain three, not two. Yeah, enough land land drops to gain three, not two. So I'm one off here. I don't regret killing Vivian. Don't regret it at all. Yeah, I was saving. Yeah, I was saving the cast down to see if they if they had like uh, if they would have played the jellyfish on at six man. I would have been able to cast down that jellyfish. That can be bad. So do we want to turn the Tithe Takers into other 1-1s? One Probably not. It's going to gain 6. Yeah, we're one short again. <laughs> Last turn we were one short, this turn we're one short. Always one short. So yeah, so if I don't kill Vivian, then um, when they finality, like so we we hit them down to two, and then whenever they before they finality, they minus Vivian to kill one Seraph, but we'd still have we'd still have enough, we'd still have uh, four flyers there because they were at. They were at only seven mana available. Yeah, they they would not have had another spell. So we would have had yeah, we would have been able to finish them off with the flyers. So yep, I should have just attacked the three all three seraphs at them, put them down to two. So last time I want to do the same thing we did last time here. Bring in the Sajani, get these cast downs in here. Uh, go down to one Mortify, get the last Midnight Reaper, cutting all these Hunted Witnesses, and bring in this Contempt in. So, yep. Did not end up being able to kill Vivian and kill them. The problem with attacking with the Tithe Takers there is... We don't win the, like, with the power they had on the battlefield and my life total at that point. I don't really win the race if they just swing back. So I, like, I kind of have to just have the Tithe Takers for defense. Yeah, I would have got the token with it to block with, but then what? What am I? What am I doing then? Like, why? Why suicide attack in a creature just to get a token to block? Like, what's the point of that? Yeah, this is a good time to bolt the bird with me, knowing that my next few turns I'm gonna have stuff to cast. If I didn't like have anything to cast the next turn, I could kind of wait and see if they'd have the contempt into Jade Light thing, or sorry, the not con 
the wild growth walker into jade light where we could be killing the wild growth walker with the cast down Yeah, I can't win them all. I so how that game played out would have won if I would have attacked uh, all three creatures at them. I was not aggressive at their life total enough. But we're in a new game here. Pitiless Pontiff should do some work for us. I think I could have been more aggressive with attacking with Pitiless Pontiff the previous game as well. Honestly, don't know why they're not... I mean, I guess they just want Midnight Reaper off the battlefield, but... I feel like that should be a contempt on the pontiff because I could sacrifice the other ones. This feels like a finality, like fine finality. Willing to trade? Hmm. Play history. Alright, well now I wish I would have played the priest. Obviously. So a little black mana. Trade my 1-1 token for the Jade Light. Yeah, Reaper is a knight. Zombie knight. I guess I should just sack it to make Pontiff indestructible. I don't think we're winning this with you know them having those four cards in hand still, but we're gonna try. We're trying here. Okay. Mortify's good. Kill this wild growth walker.
I don't even know if I want to actually trade Sarah for Hydroid Crisis, honestly. I don't think I do. Yeah, exclamation point deck list gets you there. These wild breath walkers are tough to beat. It's difficult to beat. We need a Johnny's. We got our four Johnny's. We need we really need those. And I don't I don't want to trade You're with having Pitiless Pontiff. Um yeah, I don't really want to trade a knight token for a branch walker, I don't think. Hey, Zerf, going okay. Looks like we're going to be losing this. I could have won the first game. But... Looks like we're going to be 1-1 one one against Ultai. Which really isn't that bad. Especially for, for our deck. They go over the top of us. Quite a bit. Yeah, we got Game of Thrones standard decks. We had Abzan Treasures last round. We're going to have Dragons up after this. Aristocrat decks are, it's a throwback to Cartel Aristocrat, but it's referring to decks that you don't mind sacrificing your creatures. Yeah, Krasis is too strong. Alright, so the first game, that was my bad. But if we if we win fifty percent of our matches against Soul Tie, which is where we're at right now in this league, one and one, I think that's a pretty big win for this deck. Alright, let's see if we don't play against Soul Tie this time. That'd be nice. Uh, I don't Zerf, I don't know what you're talking about. Or I don't know what you're referencing. Are you just talking about the three mana Gideon Planeswalker? Hey, what's up, J Bulls? Or is there like a, a different card? Like I guess I don't know what the name of Gideon is. Is it Gideon Blackblade? Thanks for that resub there, J Bulls. All right, Merfolk. Let's go with the Orzhov Enforcer to start with. We don't have the mana to activate the Pontiff right now. And even if these things get bigger, the Enforcer has the Death Touch. Yeah, Gideon's a strong card. You know, 
I think it does. I think it could be just a really good sideboard option against control decks. That's where I mostly see it. Doesn't look like I don't think it's going to be too great against aggro decks. doesn't you know it's just very very offense you know it's just all it cares about is attacking and playing offense and stuff it, if your opponent's playing a faster deck Gideon's not going to help you very much it's going to it's not going to help you get run over all right so getting deeper to lead out of here because I don't want them to be able to play more merfolk and put more counters on this bioman this benthic biomancer and then loot more and everything like that so just killing that right away go seraph go Mistbinder. All right, no attacks. Um, let's see if this Ajani resolves. We can see it getting spell pierced. All right, did not get spell pierced. That's good. And we're gonna bring back a to death touch creature. You, my friend, there's more work to do. All right, getting the Abzan Treasures deck up on YouTube. It's almost almost ready to go there. So I'm finishing up right now. Up. Back to the chat. I must go. Get some Game of Thrones soundtrack music. We could probably do that. Yeah, I don't know if we would want Game of Thrones soundtrack music for the next, um, I guess it's three more hours until the, the season finale premiere. The final season premiere. So maybe not quite yet, maybe we're a little closer. Or that could be our, our final boss music. Meow, 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 meow. Hawkeye singing it. <laughs> King tells us there's something really depressing about opening boosters and getting gems. Well, it's it's a lot better than opening boosters before they they changed it. You know, you could just open a booster and you get the fifth copy of whatever card that you already have. So you know, you already have four of whatever rare. You just get the fifth copy and it does basically nothing. It's like, you know, like one percent or like less than one percent of a vault or whatever. And so you get 
get nothing. Now you're getting 20 gems at least. Kill this, kill this, and kill this. We're winning a late game here. Let's see if we can get to a late game. attacking with. Maybe attack with four. Have a three turn clock with those. It's a three turn clock either way, whether I attack with five or four, so let we just do four, four, and four. I guess if I attack with five Okay, no, I should attack with all five. I I didn't think about it until after I was already done. If I attack with all five, they go to seven and then a Johnny tick up and puts two counters on them and then they're lethal, so I could add lethal the next turn. Yeah, I should have just attacked with all of them. I did that math a little too late. So, against Merfolk, let's get other cast downs in Contempt, Mortify. Bellhaunt's actually probably really good here. Maybe some Liras. I don't want these Midnight Reapers. They can go and. This is too many fours. Am I cutting a Johnny in this matchup? Yeah, I guess I am. What else? Pitiless Pontiff can go. Because <clears throat> whenever they kill us, they're just going to like tap down my creatures with like sleep and stuff like that. Tempest Caller. And... Don't really need that. Let's take a gutter bones out. Man, I could I could use some sushi. Sushi sounds great. I think we can keep this. Harv, are you are you talking about like how does it hurt free to play budget players? Are you just talking about how they reduced the the prizes for the events? Because that like that doesn't like the reduction in prizes certainly hurts. But I wouldn't say that that's part of... I wouldn't say that's part of, like, getting gems now. Because they're still... There's... Like basically there's yeah, just like some like the events don't pay out as many um they don't you don't get as many free cards or not free cards, but you don't get as many card rewards in the prizes now as you used to.
You can, yeah, you can play the the constructed events with gems though. So this benthic biomancer can turn into a three three. So I'm double blocking it, but I want to get it off the battlefield to keep my opponent from bleeding more. Alright, so no afterlife token for us. Very timely, fourth mana. And I like where we're at. We'll see what our opponent has for their last couple cards here. Hey, there you go, Kaios. You went you won four constructed events, 5-0 with the Orzov Angels deck? That's awesome. Yeah, I really like that Orzov Angels deck. Rockborn with the sub. Being on that two month streak. Thank you so much, Rockborn. Do appreciate that. <laughs> yep, yeah, Hawkeye is next to me on the hype boat. Yep. It is awesome. Do I? Yeah, I'll keep these back. I don't know. I'll, I'll keep them back for a little bit. Maybe I should play Haunted Witness and then cast down the Mistbinder. I don't know. I kind of like having the Seraph out here. All right, so they can tap three of these things to draw cards. Ooh, good Contempt. Get that Kumena out of here. Good time in contempt. Way to go. All right, never mind. I'm going to attack. Yeah, very timely contempt. Okay, Harv, if you say the f so you're saying the fifth copy of protection does nothing for me, but you're getting more wild cards per month with the old system. Like the vault system is still in place. And so if you weren't Oh, but I guess you get some gems. So you you would rather have the points with the rares towards the vault than the gems that they give you. I think the gems are, are more valuable because you can use the gems to enter events. Or buy packs. I think I need to incentivize my opponent to attack because otherwise they'll just sit back and draw a lot of cards. So if I play defense, if we both, like, if I sit back on defense, they'll just sit back also and draw cards, and that's not good for me. So I think I have to incentivize them to attack. I don't, I don't think the vault changed at all. The only, the only thing that changed is you just don't open up the rares anymore, but the commons, uncommons, the regular points, those are all the same. You just don't open up. extra rares anymore. Bellhaunt is a great card. Man, we've drawn really well this this match. Especially this game. We drew like the fourth land right in time when we were sitting on the Seraphs. We drew that Contempt for the Kumena. Turned out they had another Kumena, but oh well. 
but it's still a really good draw. Now this Bell Haunt's a really good draw. Can't complain at all about these draws this game. I guess I should have cast down this. Yeah, I should just cast down this thing first. Make them draw. All right, give me a fr give me a frago. I guess I just don't. I guess I just don't know the the change that you're talking about. Thing every pack opened, regardless, made you have vault progress. It filled faster before they changed it. Now you never get vault. I guess I don't. I guess, like, you don't get the progress from the rares because you get, you know, just different rares for your collection now. Or you get the gems. But the commons and uncommons still go progress towards the vault. I guess that's, I guess that's the difference. All right, we got another pack. Let's crack this pack. It's basically, it's just going to be gems. We already got the, the whole set, unless it's a wild card. All right, so 20 gems. All right, so we are three and one. Okay, three and one. So we need to win this match, and then we go to our final boss where we'll play some Game, Game of Thrones playlist. No, the no the the person that was talking about it wasn't like making a huge stink about it or anything. It was just they were just pointing out that, that they thought the change was. Or they didn't like the change. They thought it was better before, but um, wasn't it wasn't anything like a, a complaint of the the system was really bad or anything like that. They were being nice about it and everything, and it was just a topic that came up. So don't need to be mad at that person. Uh, what deck plays opt then search for Escanta? Looks like this is probably going to be probably going to be a like a Nexus deck or a Wilderness Reclamation deck. Unfortunately, so like Priest isn't very good there, but ne neither is or Orzal Enforcer. Neither of these cards are very good there. I guess I should just play Gutter Bones. So I should just play this Goblet Shrine and tap. I guess I should yeah. I guess Gutter Bones is just my better card to play. I should just play the Goblet Sh Shrine there. Okay. Attack. Want to get a, a faster clock here before mortifying. I think it's important to speed up this clock quite a bit. Hey, that was good. If I would have just mortified that as Kanto, they would have just had another one on top. So do I kill as Kanta or Reclamation? Looks like as Kanta. I wanted them to be tapped out before I played it. Didn't want them to be able to counter that. Is 
No, not the chemist was in sight. Ugh. Four cards. To draw four. They have infinite mana, so like the mana costs don't matter. So chemist was in sight is just a draw four, because you know one of them will be a land, basically. I guess it's draw three, discard one kind of thing. Or sorry, draw four, discard one. So they just don't have to worry about mana costs anymore. I just hope I just have to get them to not have infinite turns. So I want them to just draw a bunch of lands. Wow, they just don't they don't have any lands in hand. They're not putting into play any lands off these growth spirals. Yeah, I agree. It is difficult for them to go infinite without the flip desk canta. We need to stop drawing lands ourselves. I don't I don't really have very good draws in general here. Like, nothing matters too much. It's just whether they, you know, go infinite kind of thing. Proud to fight by your side. Hmm. Alright, so we'll sack. Target you. Sacrifice these two. Get this enforcer back. We still need you. And play another Midnight Reaper. Put this back in my hand. Extra turn number one. We're basically looking for more priests of Forgotten Gods because the priests can you know, mow down the opponent even through the fogs. But they've gone through three fogs already. Yeah, they've gone through three fogs. So this is looking good for us. We go. All right, get all these dresses in. Get the Ajani. So that that worked out perfectly for us. Not us not mortifying their Ascanta for a turn, and then they had another Ascanta on top that they put in the graveyard, and then we mortified their Ascanta the other the next turn. So. That worked out pretty perfectly for us. Hey, Narinen. Welcome back.
Oh, one four four three. Whoops. That's down to one forty two now. <laughs> Not the best hand. Maybe this should be a mulligan, honestly. I definitely like tight staker. And if we can get white mana, you know, like curving... If we just get the white mana, we get to curve tight staker, history of Johnny. Like, that's a strong curve. There we go. So, switching up the discussion a little bit there, so the free-to-play stuff. If y'all didn't see, I have started to add more rooms or channels to our Discord, and so the Discord is for everybody to join. If you'd like to join there, talk MTG, talk new War of the Sport cards, no let us know what you're playing at FNM. Look how far uh, you have come. On arena during weekend tournaments, that kind of stuff. If you want to update the chat on, like, if you're playing a weekend tournament, your record and everything, join our Discord channel. Feel free to talk magic. Uh, if you need some help on your deck list for any of those, perfect place there for everybody. You can also link your Twitch account to Discord, especially if you are a subscriber. I'll be posting stuff. Uh, just for subscribers later on there also. It'll be a subscriber only room. Hey, they got a little bit of red in their deck. That's different. So hopefully our opponent doesn't find a fog. And they don't have all the turns and we get to win. Uh, you're welcome, Akron. Stuff that Wilderness Reclamation does is pretty ridiculous. <laughs> usually I would not be excited for a... Yeah, like usually you would not catch me being excited um, for a new Teferi. But the good, the good thing that the next Teferi is going to do is the next Teferi does mean that like whenever if you play it your opponents can only cast stuff during sorcery speed so they can't cast stuff even end step so it does make wilderness reclamation do nothing <laughs> so i guess teferi's the hero we need against reclamation all right we are four and one final boss time Let's see, is there a... Does Spotify have like a Game of Thrones playlist? All right, final boss hype. Here we go.
the uh, or House Lannister and their Orzhov Aristocrat deck has made it to the final boss. Hallowed Fountain. Mookie Bear, welcome back. Thanks for that resub there, Mookie Bear. I think Tithe Taker is going to be better than Priest of Forgotten Gods against Hallowed Fountain. It looks like we got Esper Control here. Ugh, if we just hit this land drop and play to Johnny here. Would have been great for us. We'll just throw the Orzhov Enforcer out there also. So this... Oh, it's Cry the Carnarium? Ugh. Uh, Kaya's Wrath, we at least have a couple 1-1s. One uh, and still don't hit the fourth land. Man, we needed that at Johnny so bad. Would have pumped up one of our thing to not die to Cry the Carnarium. Ugh. We need if you show remorse, I'll show restraint. Man, not not hitting this fourth land killed us. One's over. I won't let you win. No time for a break. Well, oh uh, no, they're not even tapped out. Alright, bunch of duress. An extra Johnny, extra Midnight Reaper. Maybe some Bell Haunts, maybe? Bell Haunts not bad. Like make them discard a card. Doesn't die to stuff. Gosh, I have a bunch of like these small creatures that just aren't very good. Pontiff's not that good. Alright, I just want those cards. Can we just play those ones? Those ones are all great. We have to throw in nine other cards. Yeah, I guess we're playing a Contempt. And I guess I'll play Pontiffs. And... Just play the One Drops. I'll play two Mortifies. Is there any music playing right now? I can't really hear it. This must be north of the wall. Y'all can't hear it either. Yeah, this would be a great hand if we had black mana. Thinking about keeping. Let's go to the next song. We could keep this, though. Bleh. Well, hey, Theorok. Thank you so much for the Twitch Prime sub there. I 
hope they don't have another cry of the carnarium. Okay, good. Not cry of the carnarium. And Tithe Taker doing its job here because they don't get to actually cast Chemister's Insight there. I don't know. I have the music up the same volume. It's just, it's being, it's, for some reason, it's not. I don't, I don't know why it's really low, basically. Can we get there? They could place... If they have... Yeah, if they draw something that doesn't cost very much mana, they could place something and absorb it. All right. Our mulligan to five with just Tithe Taker Gutter Bones got there. I guess the Duress on the Kai's Wrath was certainly useful. Try another song. See if you can hear it better. So we got plenty of mana, and we have a duress, and a one drop. One drop doesn't really kill the opponent though. Duress is really good. Why can't we just have nice things? All right, on yet another mold of five, but we are on the draw this time. Attack. Absorb a hunted witness. All right, good. Still no cry of the carnarium. playlist isn't working. I'm blaming that playlist. That wasn't wasn't playing music for me. I could hear.
draw another card. Must be nice. Alright, well, we, we won one game on a mold of five, not the other one, though. Basically, they got Cry of the Carnarium, we, we lose. They don't have Cry of the Carnarium, we won. That's how those games went. Cry of the Carnarium is just... That's, like, the best card in the format against, against our deck, unfortunately. Uh, game one was really the one that uh, really missed not winning game one. You know, like, we had uh, a pretty decent curve there the game one. We had Tithe Taker into history, but we just did not hit our fourth land drop for a Johnny. If we would have just hit the fourth land drop for a Johnny, we win the game one uh, going away there. But we didn't. They had a Crowther Carnarium later on that exiled some more things because we are playing, like, these Enforcers and stuff like that. Our deck only has 23 lands, so it, it can be a struggle hitting the four lands sometimes with our deck. Um, but, yep. Uh, overall, though, the deck played pretty well. Um, four and two is not bad. You know, we went one and one against Sultai, which that's going to be a tough matchup for us. So don't hate going one and one there against Sultai. All right, we can get our, we can stop that now. Um, but, yeah, so not so bad. Overall, as, as far as Orzov decks go, I, I do think the Orzov Angels deck that we played yesterday or the day before, maybe it was two days ago, whenever we played the Orzov Angels deck, I, I think that that deck is a better version of a similar kind of deck. But this is a... We went with the Aristocrat-style deck here where we're sacrificing our own creatures for profit because this is a House Lancer deck here. So... There we go. All right, so if you're watching this video later on on YouTube, don't forget to hit that subscribe button over there. But thanks for watching some Orzov Aristocrats, and I'll see you for the next video.